on? My name is Blake Davis. I'm a Chattanooga-based cinematographer, and this is the story of how I filmed George Gervin. But this story starts two weeks ago. Let's go check that out. On my way to San Antonio today. I'd like to get my steps in, so we're taking the little treadmill thing, and I like to feel a lot faster than I actually am. to San Antonio to play some basketball. Good, how are you? Doing good. That's a nice camera. Thank you. But you can see it on that side? Yeah, I got a monitor right there. Oh. So. Oh. Would you do vlogs? Uh, here and there. Oh, wow. enjoy. You yeah, you too. Do I do vlogs? Maybe now. <laughs> Maybe now. In the right So while I'm here to film George Gervin and his grandson, the Ice Man and the Ice Kid, I've also told myself I'm not leaving until I play George Gervin one-on-one. -on -one. NBA Hall of Famer versus Blake Davis. Who do you think is going to win? This is where the story really starts to unfold. Before we play, I am giving myself a few excuses. One, I woke up at four. Two, I'm pretty hungry. Three, I'll be tired from videoing. What's going on? I just can't believe how God has lined this all up, even if it's just for, you know, three, four hours. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. They were talking about finding a crew down here to kind of help them. Okay. And I was like, I don't really want to turn that down. <laughs> I was like, I'll, I'll fly there. Shouldn't be flying. Like a rock guarantee. Without trying. So that was the point in the story where the agenda of why I was there completely changed. I made it all about me and how I could get the coolest YouTube video or um, experience. Filming, hanging out, playing one-on-one -on -one with an NBA Hall of Famer. I made it about me. You see, I was there for one reason and I just got so caught up in trying to sound cool or have a cool story or a cool video that I forgot to treat him like a human. You see, I neglected the fact to think about that this guy was pushing 70, just wanted to live a private life, and that I was lucky to be filming him in any capacity. I got so concerned about how I could create some sort of viral video that I was just using him as a means to get what I wanted. So naturally, I had to catch myself. I had to reassess why I was there, why I was filming, and what I was even doing. So I made the call in the middle of the day that, you know, my idea of not leaving until I play one-on-one, -on -one, probably should scrap that. Probably should just do what I'm actually there for. Truthfully, he wasn't being that easy to film, wasn't working with what I was getting. So I, I had to, you know, I had to get what I needed to get for the shoot, but I also needed to remember to treat him like a human. Also, he wanted some privacy, so I'm not gonna show too much footage of him. That just wouldn't feel right, but I am gonna just drop a quick, quick clip to show that I'm not lying. Okay, back to the story. So anyways, something something started to change when I treated him like a human. He started opening up, telling more jokes, and just being more receptive to my presence. I, he wasn't a big fan of the camera, but when I was treating him like a human, he was a different person than when I was trying to get something out of him. Understandably so, too. And you know, you, you can't blame him. He's been in the media and the spotlight for the past 30 years that he just wants to enjoy himself now in these days. And here I am, some guy trying to get something out of him with a camera. So anyways, when we wrapped up and we were just talking after the shoot, I mentioned that I had started to pick up golf 
and I saw on his Instagram that he was a big golfer, so I, I naturally knew this would lead to some sort of conversation. But he insisted that he give me 120 of his best golf balls. And see, that's that wouldn't have happened if I kept the same attitude I had earlier. Because we made a connection and we were human to human, you know, he, he wanted to give me these 120 golf balls. That's pretty cool. I might need to leave it for the, uh, the flight. I might need to leave it closed. Before it starts spilling everywhere. Yeah. This is where this video comes full circle. Okay, and this isn't all of them, but it gets the idea across on camera. But anyways, to bring this full circle where I was hitting those golf balls, these golf balls, off a cliff, I want to go ahead and just give some of these away to y'all. I want this to be an extension of his generosity to me because I treated him like a human. And so if you want to have some of these golf balls, just leave a comment down below and just kind of your thoughts on this video. And then just let me know if you're actually interested in the golf balls. I won't enter you if you're not interested, but if you still want to leave feedback, that'd be much appreciated. I'll randomly pick a winner in some amount of time. And yeah, it was just a cool way to make this video come full circle. Next week, we're talking about how I shot for the NFL. I'm just kidding, not there yet, but last week I talked about baseball this week, basketball, and we'll talk about the NFL one day, hopefully. Anyways, the big takeaway from this video is, as a filmmaker, you need to be treating people like humans, no matter how cool, how famous, or even on the other end, how lame they are. Treat these people like humans. It's part of your job as a filmmaker. Hey, I'm really glad that you watched this video. If you're interested in more content about filmmaking, Go ahead and subscribe. Leave a like, leave a comment. I'd love to have you a part of the army. Army. What? We'll figure out something. Anyways, until next time.